so uh, let's get started. We're talking about Bansky, and uh, he has quite a reputation, particularly uh, in England. Uh, and the question is, is it graffiti or is it street art? And in the process, we'll talk a lot about, and I'll show you a lot of graffiti before we even get to Bansky. But uh, it's been a lot of fun to put this together. So it's really a variety of different things. So it's primarily about Bansky and his graffiti uh, or his street art. Yeah. Can we ask questions as we go? I'm sorry. May I ask a question or should sure. I wait? Yeah, no, go ahead. You're saying Bansky. Is it Banksy or Bansky? It's probably Banksy. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was worried I spelled it wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. Okay, so we're all, I do other comps also with art, with Polder and Rothko and all that kind of stuff, and science, James Webb, it's all my background with science. I enjoy giving these talks uh, to the general community, so if you're interested, let me know. I'll be happy to come and uh, give a talk. Graffiti, definition, writing or drawing, scribbled, scratched, or sprayed illicitly on a wall or other surface in a public place. And I'm sure we've all seen it at one time or another. Here's a variety of possibilities uh, that we're seeing. Let's see, yeah, that, okay. So you see graffiti along here, uh, a variety of different places. Uh, everywhere you go, it seems there's always some graffiti. Uh, in Portland, where I was talking about this originally, uh, they actually have a Portland graffiti removal because it gets to be so heavy in many places uh, that they will actually come and remove it. Uh, as a uh, part of their uh, system of uh, the government there. And here you get a form to fill out exactly where it is, where the cross streets are and so on. Uh, there's also a combination of, you know, some things are graffiti and if it's attractive enough, you might call it wall art. This is wall art, which is no particular picture. Uh, this was in a retirement community. I think each person there put together a little uh, square of colors and so on that was combined into a whole uh, array for the retirement community to enjoy. Uh, so there's a range of things that can be very attractive, uh, even though it's not a specific, uh, what you might otherwise call art. Uh, downtown, Flagstaff, here's one you've probably seen. Uh, it's wall art, uh, certainly not graffiti. Uh, the train's going by, some of it's nicer than others, some of it you might call a picture or something, others just graffiti like this seems to be. And also, I was surprised walking one of the back alleys here. Uh, you might think that there'd be graffiti back in this place, but actually, if you take a look at it, it's quite a fancy picture just in a back alley. I mean, just amazing what you find walking around Flagstaff. I just love it. Go back. Uh, here's another. Maybe in the beginning, it was a little cruder and a little harder because they didn't have as many tools, but this guy found a way to make his own significant wall art. Well, and he was probably having fun doing it after he woke up. Certainly his neighbors admiring it. Cool. <laughs> I liked his early stuff better. I enjoy this because, you know, this is back in the day. This is what you see, okay? But this, they haven't, whoops. They haven't uh, quite, uh, found any of those that I'm aware of in the caves. I have to be a little careful about how I push this thing. Okay, here's a variety of uh, things just splayed around on uh, walls and it wasn't put there with any intent by the people that owned the place, I don't believe. Uh, you can go around just about any city and even a lot of uh, other outside places along the road. Uh, where people put on signs by the roadside, uh, their own um, idea of what art is or what they want to make a comment about. Uh, an awful lot of stuff uh, can be unusual. It can be kind of neat whenever you put it out. Here, I think, is a really neat uh, picture on a sidewalk. And it's really not quite what you think it is unless you look at it from the side. The perspective is really quite different. And I think this is kind of neat to see things like this. Uh, in Portland, we had some people that did something similar to this, but not as dramatic as this. And of course, having seen the previous thing, you already know that she's sitting really pretty far away, and that that beer sign is really spread out. And uh, this guy up here is the guy that's put these kinds of things together. Uh, 
a couple more examples because I think they're just neat to look at. You know that she, whoops, know that she's pretty far away and uh, he's just got his hand in there. It's not really three dimensional, even though it looks that way. And uh, he's not reading any kind of jeopardy. Yes. What is that form called? Is that Trump DLA? You could probably, we'll see a little bit of that a little bit more ahead of time, but that could be considered also, I think, Trump DLA. It is okay. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, well, that's clearly uh, just things drawn on the sidewalk. I included these because I thought some of these were kind of neat. Uh, this guy peeking up through this hole in the brick, well, of course, that's all just flat. And they took advantage of this, whoops, they took advantage of this uh, grating here to make a drawing on the sidewalk that makes it look like it's a really uh, a griddle yeah. for making waffles. Mm -hmm. And of course, this guy is uh, on his leaf uh, with a fish looking up, getting ready to uh, go past and maybe take a bite. Uh, just fun, fun stuff to look at, I think. This is one important. I was walking down the street and I saw, gee, this guy's looking at me. And it turns out that it wasn't really that. It was that PGE, Portland General Electric, uh, had a pole over here and uh, they were showing where three lines of electricity were going to go. I'm not sure what the dots mean, but they look like eyes to me. <laughs> but clearly, when you see it with the rest of the grass, you, you know that it's not, it's just something else. Here's some more examples. Uh, you might notice this guy also up here at the top. He's really hanging on to this. This was a light pole. You can't see the light up here, but there's a light on top of that. And then somebody extended that on a flat surface to make it look like that's part of the pencil that this dragon or whatever uh, is drawing with. And of course, this little guy here is about a little niche. I think this stuff is just fun to look at uh, and appreciate. So that's why I included it. Here's the fellow I think you were talking about before. Of course, that's not really. Uh, a big break looking inside through this. Is that the follow? Uh, no, I guess John Pugh, this is a different follow, isn't it? Another one that he did. Uh, by the way, this woman is part of the picture. She's not a person. She's part of the drawing. Uh, it's so well done. That walking down the street, all of a sudden, I'm sure you do a double take and you think, gee, I can go in this shot from the side. Same guy, he does that, does an excellent job, I think. A couple of other examples. I like this one particularly, I think it really looks like it's just a hole right through that building. This looks, whoops. This looks a little more artificial. You can tell it's a little bit more made up. Also, some of these things have a political connection. Uh, you can see, you might recognize this fellow. Um, and he's been in the news fairly recently, actually, if you've been watching the news. Attorney General William Barr has been testifying recently. Just some random things. Uh, it ranges from the very nicely put together to things that are just uh, spread out. And graffiti over graffiti is not unusual either. If they find a good place, a wall that's visible and nobody's taking particular care of it, it's a good place to go in and do some things. And what amazed me is uh, it's, you can take a look and see how well painted this is. I once went online and saw a YouTube of a guy doing some graffiti that was really intricate and fancy. And the guy was really talented, a true artist. This is not just junk sprayed on a, a train rolling by. Uh, this is real art. These guys just looking for another outlet, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Don't tolerate unwanted graffiti. Somebody spray painted over the other graffiti that was there and who put something on top of that. Sometimes good things just have to go. Progress is forward. Build another building. One of the things I wanted to point out is that having patterns discourages graffiti. You see, there's no uh, graffiti on these that had the, these are in Portland, these are the uh, subway stops or the uh, train stops. 
and they mark up the uh, glass there. And where they've done that, in other places, there's no graffiti. Uh, up here, where there was a plain wall, it's a great place for somebody to spray paint. So there was graffiti there. Street art. Of course, we know that he's not really too scared about that. Another example, I just love these things. That's why I stuck a couple of them in here to get a little bit of a background for some of this stuff. The Berlin Wall, anytime there's a wall there, and I'm sure the other side is loaded with graffiti also. Uh, political, Berlin Wall graffiti, of course, Ed Bauer and uh, And somebody trying to get through the wall. Like our East Germany, Ed Maurer. Yes, they do have some political agreements on some things, maybe not quite that close. And this is a George Floyd that was put up at the Apple Store in Portland. Uh, right away, that gets a politics into this uh, well made graffiti, uh, bring people's attention to different political things. It's not just in this country. Uh, these are overseas kinds of things also. Uh, galleries across the world, Lisbon, Portugal, uh, graffiti and Germany. These are the two guys that uh, did that. Well done, clearly. Now I've had a look at some street art and graffiti. Let's take a look at some Bansky material. Is it just street art or is it fine art? And you'll see that it's actually is worth millions of dollars. Would that I had an example of this. That would be really cool. Uh, one of the things I depended upon were these two as uh, sources of my material. This one actually is available in the Flagstaff Library. Uh, this is a book about Bansky that was really pretty good. It's mostly just the New York stuff. Uh, during October of 2013, he did a new one every day. Uh, he'd do it someplace in New York. And he wouldn't say where it was, but people became attuned to this. And as soon as it was located or identified by somebody, they would put it online. And right away, there would be lots of people there taking a look at it, taking pictures of it, and defacing it, as you'll see. I'm going to show you uh, quite a few of these. Also, uh, here's one of this Bansky. I'll get back to the New York things in a little bit. Uh, this is a very popular motif that he has called Love in the Air. Love is in the Air. It was first used on a wall in Israel. Uh, it's repeated here, and this uh, clearly, this must be a gallery because they're using their gloves to handle this uh, well framed thing. Love is in the Air. A London auction in June of 2013 went for $250,000. And at Thothby's in 2022, it went for six and a half million dollars. So you should be so lucky. <laughs> but let's go back now. This is in England. And one of his favorite motifs uh, is this little girl in the red balloon. And uh, he would put that various places. And you'll see there's uh, more to that also. Uh, as a matter of fact, you'll see this little girl, which of course is a dummy. It's not really a real girl and a balloon, and it's actually on its way up. And people are aware of this, so everybody's taking pictures of it as it's drifting over uh, the landscape. Kind of fun. <clears throat> Here's one of Bansky's uh, murals. They're really very technically very well done. Bansky and some other Artist, genius with a spray can, Bansky in particular, but is it art? Yeah, I think a lot of it is, but everybody can make up their own mind about that. Uh, I'm sorry, I should have had that down. This was painted on the side of a health clinic, young people in Bristol. In a referendum, 93% of the people who voted said it should be allowed to stay. And if I show you the whole thing, this is the whole thing. So it's a little bit risque, but uh, people wanted it to stay. Just kind of a humorous aspect of things. This is one of the uh, things that Bansky uh, put aside of a uh, 
school. Uh, he painted this mural for students at a primary school in his hometown, Bristol, England. The students at the school had named a house at their school for him. He surprised them with a mural when they returned from a holiday break. So this is kind of a neat thing. And, you know, some of it's very intricately and well done, and some of it is sketched out. So it's a combination thing that I think is kind of neat. Black and white, full color, kind of fun. And also he talks about prejudice. Migrants not welcome. Go back to Africa. Keep off our worms to this other bird. It was destroyed by the Council of Clinton on Sea in England. They received complaints that it was offensive. But of course, it's making some comment, political comment. Here's some of his more typical kinds of things in England. Uh, this guy with his dog got in the way, uh, but she's shoveling something or other underneath the curtain. The flag of the European Union. That's, of course, just a drawing. That's not a real person. Uh, but apparently he thought some of the things were falling apart or there weren't going to be as many stars in that as they had originally planned. That was for Brexit. For Brexit. He did okay. that for Brexit. Good. Uh, here's another one that's kind of neat. And uh, it sort of tells the story of this trash bin. Whoops. With the... Uh, fire in it, and the smoke goes up and ashes along with it. And on this side, however, it's coming down as snowflakes on top of this guy who, like all of us, tried to catch a snowflake on his tongue at one time or another. And here's his sled ready to go whenever it gets uh, deep enough. Uh, alleged bank to graffiti art appears in Wales, UK in 18. Rumored that bank to artwork on a garage uh, showed a child with open arms playing what appears to be snow on a sled to the side. To the other side, ash from a rubbish bin and fire. Graffiti that has appeared on a garage in that area, which is rumored to be by the anonymous street artist Vanish Bee. The festive artwork shows a child with hope. And of course, people recognize oops, they want to go and they take a look at it, and you can see the uh, corner of the building here, but of course they realize the value of this, so they fence it off so that people can't bother it or distort it or their own graffiti on top of his graffiti. And of course, then it's boxed up and taken away by some people who realize that it's got a lot of value. And we'll see the value of some of his things a little bit later. I don't have a value that was put on this. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, because uh, people do mark up his things, you can't see it here too well. Uh, let me go back here. But up here at the top, he had he was using basically this as a flagpole. It's too bad that blocks that out. And somebody had already gone up here and put some graffiti on it. And then somebody covered that over so it didn't look like it was graffiti covered. And then somebody put graffiti on top of that. So people just don't let it alone. Graffiti artists have to go and make their mark regardless. But these two young people were uh, putting their hands over their hearts and saluting that flag or showing respect for that flag. And fortunately, the people uh, in the area did put some plastic over it. Uh, oops. Go close to Anyhow, put some plastic over it because somebody comes along, some graffiti artist, and has to put graffiti over that yet. And if you notice, there's even more graffiti on top of the white flag that was up here. Uh, so people just can't let blow it up on one. This is Banksy at his workshop. Of course, he's not gonna let you know who he is. So uh, he has this uh, monk's hood on. Here he is hard at work again in his workshop. Of course, anybody that's in the art scene might really recognize what that is, but people in the art scene I think at a certain level know who he is and they could help him in a lot of ways. Uh, tourist information, I'm not sure I'd want to go to this guy for tourist information. Uh, he got an awful lot of play on a television. Uh, so she's out here talking about this one, of course, uh, in particular. No such thing as good publicity. Well, oh, how about that? Publicity sometimes bad publicity, but it's sometimes bad publicity, just publicity. 
I love New York. And I was surprised to find out that it wasn't just outdoor kinds of things. He actually fiddled around inside some of these high class museums. Now, he never did anything destructive to the paintings in the museum. Rather, he would add his own paintings to this as though they were part of the original, the original gallery collection. And I thought that was kind of clever in so many respects. Uh, you can't see who this guy is. They changed his head so you can't identify him possibly. But he's hanging this thing that he brought in probably underneath his coat and he's now going to hang it on the wall. Sure enough, there it is. And it looks like he's done that. This is a guy in a different coat. So it looks like they've done this a couple of different places in a couple of different museums. So that looked kind of flaky for in a museum with all of these graffiti behind him, as though somebody had actually gone in and done something with that painting. But of course, that's something he brought in completely and just hung it between these other two legitimate paintings. Here's another one. He just put it in there, added some information about the painting in a gas mask. Who knows what that said? Here's another one. We'll take a look at that in a little bit bigger. And of course, the guy that's actually hung it might be this guy. They don't want to identify anything. It looks like he just put the explanation for that painting underneath it. So he's probably the guy that brought it in. But these are some of the uh, <laughs> paintings that he added. I mean, he's got a sense of humor, you got to admit, at least certain. Now, you know, I don't think you need a sense of humor to see this, but that I think, and this guy, I think and that's particularly humorous to me. I think that's kind of cool. And if we take a look at the real painting compared to this one, this is what it really looked like. It's a water lily pond by 1899, and it looked like it was modernized with our standard, uh, you know, throw junk in a pond uh, by the road kind of thing. Uh, it's really a very well-known painting. The painting sold, this painting sold in October 2020 for $9.8 million. These are the kind of things that he's hanging in there also. Exit through the gift shop. Well, you've all gone to a museum, and a lot of them, close to the gift shop, they have a they want you to exit through the gift shop because they also want you to pick up something on the way out and buy some of their stuff. That's why you go out through the gift shop instead of through the front entrance where you paid your fee. And uh, he recognizes that. He makes a little bit more crude there, however, and oops, in terms of these things are, my thumb is too big for this. The home sweet home is kind of uh, gauche. Uh, he also was international. Uh, this is the Palestinian, the wall separating Palestine and Israel. And uh, he had a lot of comment about that. He was very political in some of these respects. There's an awful lot of, anytime there's a, a big plain wall like that, uh, it's just too hard for graffiti artists to stay away. So it was all kind of graffiti put on that. Uh, and he, of course, added his also. Um, you can see this wall goes for quite a distance, all lines all the way along, uh, separating uh, Israel and Palestine. This is one of his. Uh, he has a little girl escaping with uh, flying onto some balloons. Here's uh, another graffiti they put up, uh, trying to put a dotted line there to uh, maybe separate the wall or break the wall, tear it apart. Uh, here are some kids put up their uh, imagination of perhaps where they could escape to a southern island uh, with palm trees and uh, ocean around it. Uh, it got a lot of attention in Britain. UK graffiti artist tags the wall. This is uh, one of the tags on the wall in uh, Israel. British graffiti artist Bansky has adorned sections of the security barrier the surreal paintings and uh, an article around. He got some information on uh, all the way, some attention back in England. Even uh, this is the Jerusalem Post.
some more information about that other countries, Madrid. West Banksy, big drawing. There's some kids having fun on their swing set around one of the guard towers. February 2015, here's the early watchtower swing ride. And this is one I think is kind of cool because it's kind of different. There's a bleeding British telephone box. Uh, as you see the blood coming out of this red thing. This was later sold at charity auction for $605,000. Uh, Banksy is not trying to make money. He's very generous in giving this stuff away uh, for that kind of money. Uh, of course, once it's out there and exposed, he doesn't want to go and pick it up. But I think uh, they have to protect this so that somebody doesn't cart it away uh, at night because they realize the value of it. Here they showed a couple of pictures of people making it. Of course, you can't identify any of the people that are there doing it, uh, but it was a pretty major thing to uh, put the pieces together, uh, weld them and make that thing so that it uh, was the uh, piece of gadgetry that uh, he wanted to put out on the sidewalk. And I don't know how many of you know it, but there's, uh, oh, okay, this is where they are. You know, it's a big time deal to lift this heavy thing and bring it out and put it in place. Uh, took some pretty significant equipment, so it's pretty expensive to just do that. I don't know how many of you know it, uh, but there's also a Flagstaff book exchange. It's up north of the hospital on one of the roads up there, and I've gone up there, and um, you know you can go in, and there are two of them actually, and uh, where you see these small neighborhood book things that are only so big. Well, this is two of these telephone books. And uh, I was up there the other day. I tried to get a picture of it, but uh, somehow or other, I lost that picture. But there's now uh, also a flagpole between here flying a British flag. Uh, so the guy is apparently a Brit that brought these over and uh, very proud of the fact. And one time I walked past, there was a pickup truck with another one of these in the back of it. So he may be going to do this someplace else too. I don't know, or do something else with it. Uh, but it's kind of cool. A little bit different. Uh, in May uh, of 2010, directed by Bansky, with Bansky, this is a brainwash. Uh, Space Invader, Deborah Gura, following the style of some of the world's prolific street artists, an amateur filmmaker, filmmaker makes a foray into the art world. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 9.4, which is a pretty high rating for Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, the DVD is Exit Through the Gift Shop. It's a Banksy film, that is, it's about Banksy. And it was put together by this guy. He made the film. And uh, it's in, this one is actually in the uh, Flagstaff Library. So if you want to go take a look at more of this stuff, uh, it's available. Bansky in New York in October 2013 placed an image each day in October in an unknown until it was discovered by some way location. So I'll show you a few of these uh, that I thought were rather interesting and available. On October 1st, it was in Chinatown, New York City, and he had these couple of guys, and of course they're up there reaching for this graffiti can which is in a no graffiti thing. And already somebody's had some graffiti there before he put this artistic graffiti on that wall. Close up where he's reaching into this uh, sign to get the uh, spray can, go do his own graffiti. And of course, this is a wall with an awful lot of graffiti on it already. But here's the graffiti that he added October 3rd. A dog peeing on a fire hydrant. Ah, you complete me. <laughs> that's so true. A little closer. And that shows where it is. 24th and 6th Avenue. And of course, everybody gets into it. Uh, this is more is added, more graffiti was added than was there before. 
And as soon as people find out about it, they show up and they start taking pictures of it. Uh, it went around pretty quickly. Once people got into this and understood what was going on, they start looking uh, for information about where the moon was. I don't know how they did it, whether it was online with some website or something, but anyhow, the information got out there pretty quickly. I think this is kind of neat. Do not enter. You may be surprised by this friendly uh, monster on the other side. Red Hook neighborhood of Brooklyn uh, on October 7th. And uh, I think this is kind of neat. And notice in this one how clear all of these patches are, because as soon as somebody has graffiti available, they're going to add more graffiti to it. Now, this is kind of respectful. She comes over and she puts herself into there while somebody takes a picture of her holding the end of this uh, balloon that looks like it's about to waft into the sky. But very shortly afterward, somebody has messed this up and it's not nearly as clear as what it was here. Somebody had to come in and mess it up with graffiti. But people still appreciate it. So she came and had to put her, had her picture there with her uh, hand holding the end of it. Here's another one in New York. I'm not sure what the date was on this and I didn't see it. But here uh, was an indication of brought, bring some attention to the homeless, uh, showing this guy, homeless guy here. Uh, it looks like uh, some uh, reindeer from Santa Claus came down to uh, give him a sleigh ride somewhere. And of course, everybody likes to have their picture taken with these things once it's found. A variety of uh, things. I'm not sure that these were even, I don't know how that got in there. But anyhow, uh, another one, a political comment again. This is a Boston drawing. Uh, follow your dreams. Cancel. And he just put that up there. So his dream, he doesn't look like his dreams have been followed very far. Uh, here's another uh, in color. And uh, this poor little guy pulling these guys, it clearly looked like they're pretty well off. Can't let it well enough. Well, they got a scribble everywhere. But of course, the Bansky part is down here. I think a lot of this was added later, uh, but that's what was originally there uh, with the Bansky. This is another one, uh, another comment about uh, the meat district, circulated in the meat packing district. He had somebody drive this truck around with all of these stuffed animals sticking around, sticking out, uh, on the way to the slaughterhouse, as it were. And of course, here's another one uh, somebody put in, and uh, October 12th. And of course, somebody's gotten into the act here. Uh, this certainly looks like it's uh, a priest ready to uh, receive uh, your comments and give you forgiveness. And she's uh, ready to uh, get her forgiveness. This I thought was really a cool idea. If you saw this and you recognize this love is in the air, spray paint art, would you buy one of them? 60 bucks for this black and white thing. It looks like it's pretty well mounted. I mean, it's a thick thing, so it's sturdy. You could hang it on your wall pretty well. Some of these might be interesting and are a little more complicated than just this love in the air. I don't know what these other things are. Well, I think you probably should because on day 13, Banksy set up this stand in Central Park and he sold these for 60 bucks. Each piece was originally purchased for 60 is now valued at $250,000. So I would have walked right by him just like most of the rest of us. But I were back there on a second opportunity. We do in life what we do in life echoes in eternity, and he's kind of rubbing that out. I thought this is interesting too. He took advantage of this natural piece of work that's there, and added this oriental theme. You've probably all seen these oriental bridges 
uh, with people, and these even have an oriental flavor to the uh, images up there and the oriental uh, tree down here. Uh, so it really kind of fits very well uh, into that system. And of course, it's pretty neatly done. Always somebody messing things up. And here they actually got a picture of this guy with his spray can putting the graffiti over the stuff. I really don't understand that. But they recognized what was being done. So they tried right away to get in there and they're cleaning off all of the graffiti spray. These three people are working at uh, getting this cleaned up uh, so that it's back to the original thing. Here's another one, uh, taking an advantage. And here it looks like, you know, you've seen the carnivals where the guy smashes here and it makes the uh, thing go up. It's too bad this thing is here again. But you make the uh, tracer here slide up the thing and ring the gong whenever you hit the hammer hard enough to drive it up that high. And uh, takes advantage of what's already there. And of course, this woman has to get into the act. She's putting her head across this, makes it look like somebody's he's slamming down on her head. <laughs> That's pretty innovative. I would never have thought of that. Everybody's having fun. Now he's standing up there, he's getting his foot smacked instead, but just to get into the picture, he's got his foot on the guy's head instead. Get out for life. It certainly looks like it's a high class person giving him the uh, thing to do this break caning on. Uh, one of the comments here, this is on the main entrance to Larry Flynn's Hustler Club in New York's Health Kitchen, October 13th. This was done in October 24th. And here he has uh, put this very valuable thing in one of the comments. I figured whether I included it, it's still here. But some people may comment about that. He does this on Hustlers, uh, Larry Flynn, a very wealthy person. He puts this thing that's clearly worth an awful lot of money. Uh, and he gives it to somebody, uh, Larry Flynn. Hopefully Larry Flynn will do something and give it to Charlie in some way. Uh, we'll see. But if everybody's uh, here, this woman is, oh no, please, not you. She's looking the other way and refusing the flowers. People get into the act. Now here's the one. Today's piece of all people in New York to accidentally rich by leaving a piece of very valuable work. Did it have to be Larry Flynn? Flint. Just another. Somehow or other, the two seem to get together. Donated uh, some things to a very worthy charity called Housing Works uh, so that they could benefit by auctioning off one of his pieces. Uh, he's thoughtful in that direction in a couple of ways. This is the piece, uh, Bansky's latest piece, raising big bucks for charity. He donated it to the Housing Works. Uh, this is the piece. It sold for $615,000 because it had Bansky's name associated and Bansky had added this. I thought that's kind of cool. A doctor listening to the heart and I love New York. This is a Los Angeles thing. This is a little bit out of it from his usual thing. With uh, this kid and all of these crayon drawings, he's got a machine gun that's got different colored crayons in here instead of bullets. Not sure what that really means, but it's kind of interesting. And it's really well done. He's going carefully, meticulously done in this ammunition belt with a different color. Like the machine gun is pretty well drawn, kind of neat. An angel dropping blow down to the people below. Lansky has a boat. Uh, already 
rescued 89 migrants. This is in the Mediterranean. Remember, all the people from Africa are trying to escape and get up to Europe. Uh, he has this boat. Uh, he encountered a dinghy packed with 130 people taking on water with more than 200 people aboard. Louis Michel, 101 foot former French patrol vessel, could not properly steer and so issued a distress call. An Italian Coast Guard vessel with humanitarian ship Sea Watch 4 responded and took the migrants. Bansky posted a video of the rescue online and captured the world. Like most people who make it in the art world, I bought a yacht to cruise the Med. At least 1,283 migrants died trying to make crossing from Africa to Europe last year. I guess this was the summer of 2020. And he got involved, and uh, his ship also was out there rescuing uh, people. And this is his ship. Uh, and notice this part right here. You see the girl with the heart? If you blow that up, that's clearly a Bansky thing. That's Bansky's boat. I don't know whether you could trace the owner of that back and find out who Bansky was. I'm sure he took care of that so that you wouldn't be able to do it. But uh, anyhow, uh, he saved an awful lot of people. In that time, over 400 people died uh, or went missing attempting, uh, attempting the journey. Uh, okay, we'll talk a little bit about what the value of these things is. We'll go back to uh, Bansky. Uh, Girl with a Balloon was put up for auction. It was framed like this, uh, and Bansky gave it to this auction. Uh, these auctions uh, are really posh things. Uh, free drinks are served when you're going to be spending a million or two for art. Uh, they don't have to worry about the details of uh, things. Uh, I'm sure it's the upper crust. Uh, everybody looks pretty well dressed here and certainly enjoying their uh, free drinks and so on. Uh, South Beach. And this was put up for auction. It ended up going for it was estimated to go for, that's what this is. This is an estimate. This is before the auction, estimated to be $250,000 to $380,000. Uh, it turned out to sell for 750,000 pounds or $977,000. But there was a thing in the audience. There was a guy who pushed a button and uh-oh, Everybody take a look at that picture because that picture has been shredded. This is the picture you just saw that went for a whole bunch of money. And there's a gizmo in the frame that shredded it. This is in the back of the frame. So once it was done, somebody in the audience pushed a button, shredded. So now that's what the auction is. But of course, that didn't diminish the value one bit. It made it that much more special, which is just incredible. Wow. Worth 1.4 million. And it went up to 25 million. <laughs> if we had a million to go buy something like that, and, I mean, you know, you'd be rich just from that one thing and then forever. It's just absolutely amazing. This is now what Bansky uh, put out for us to have better knowledge of what was going on here. This is now Bansky's thing. In rehearsals, it worked every time. It went all the way down and shredded it completely. It just didn't happen to do that when they did the auction. Here's another one. This is my next to last slide or so. Uh, just to show uh, Bansky, now this is a big one. This is, I think the information, this is like 10 feet by 12 feet, I don't know, 12 feet by eight feet or something like that. This is a big one, uh, devolved parliament, highest auction, okay, eight by 14 feet. And uh, it ended up selling for 12.1 million. So much uh, art uh, as social comment. Here's a few uh, auction prices for Bansky stuff. Uh, 
Carrie Dan Bansky, love is in the air. Six and a half million dollars in 1920 in 2022. Remember, we saw the rat here. I love rat. Uh, went for eight hundred thousand. Diamond in the rough. I don't think I showed you. I think I showed you this one. Spray paint on found oil painting. Uh, two and a half million dollars. So uh, it was quite a bit of. Okay, we'll go back to that. And uh, here's another more recent one. Uh, he made this one and then donated it to uh, healthcare workers. Uh, reported and included a note to the hospital that read, thanks for all you're doing. I hope this brightens the place up a little bit, even if it's only in black and white. Uh, I think this was actually a little bit of red, but for the most part, it's a black and white. That's the end. So who knows what the next talk will be. Uh, I think that's on Thursday. Yeah, next that's Thursday. Time, and this is about the space telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope. So if you're interested in science and especially the space telescope, which is going to tell us about all those other aliens that are out there coming to look for us, uh, this will give you a little bit more information about all of them. So thanks for coming. It's been fun to uh, talk to you. And uh, any questions or comments? I've enjoyed the discussion. Thank you.